Welcome to this, the sixth video in the series Singing with Many Voices. Today I would like to talk about identifying and developing the essentials of beautiful singing. I'm going to start with a quote by the wonderful American soprano Lisette Oropesa, who has said several times, there are more than a hundred ways to develop the essentials of beautiful singing. Therefore, I think it's important for us to every now and then look at those essentials. And when we have them clear in our mind, we can then develop ways to achieve them. And there are, as she said, many ways to achieve them. Maureen Forrester, the great Canadian uh, contralto, told me when I was a very young singer, Joan, I could teach you the principles of beautiful singing on the fingers of my hand, and it will take you a lifetime to hone them. She was dead right. There are three essentials in singing. All three are physical. One is breath, one is resonance, and the other is diction. But before we deal with those three elements which we will coordinate and balance, which is our goal, we need to talk about the element of posture. Because the body is our instrument. So if we know how to hold it in its most comfortable released position, all of those three elements of breath, resonance, and text will work ever so much better. First, let's, well, let's talk about posture a bit first. What is it? I call it noble posture, because that's all it really is. Your legs support your body evenly. Your pelvis is strong, whether you're standing or sitting. It's firm, and it's kind of your center of gravity. The rest of your torso rises up out of it into a feeling of openness, floating, flying. The shoulders, the neck, are totally free of tension, and the head seems to sit on top of the spine. So you are totally balanced, and that for me is the noble position and the singer's position. But now let's look at those three elements. The first one we'll talk about is breath mechanism. The singer's breath is far more developed than the breath of everyday life speech. But Mother Nature gave us all the equipment to do it. If you look at the singer's breath as a cycle of a few elements, it's easy to understand. First of all, there is inhalation. I call it a complete inhalation, a satisfying inhalation. Then there is a sense of settling or suspension. And in that uh, phase, the diaphragm and the uh, rib cage, the lungs, are holding the breath for you. They are putting it under pressure. They are compressing that air that you put in your body until you tell it what you want it to do. The next is the onset of that first tone, right where you finish breathing. It is often called singing on the gesture of inhalation. I like to think of it in several different ways. Inhale, inhale. Or the breath is the upbeat to your first note. Now we have the element of singing a phrase, singing through the phrase. I call that legato energy. And how does that work? It is the maintenance of the feeling of suspension or inhalation starting at the very first tone you sing. You will immediately, gently start releasing that compressed air to the next note, the next note, the next, until you finally get to the end of the phrase, to the last beat of the last note. And there is the final essence or final cycle and that is the offset of that tone. 
We want it to be as smooth, as immediate, as subtle, as instinctive, and easy and comfortable as the first onset. This way you will never have a, a difficulty starting the tone, singing through, or releasing it. And the good news is, your body will still be in the position of inhalation, and the next breath will be very, very easy to take. That essential, all those elements of this one essential breath, is usually called appoggiare. And appoggiare means very simply to lean. In fact, it is the isometric leaning of two sets of muscles that will allow the air to flow, the compressed air, to flow according to the needs of the phrase. We take the same amount of air for every phrase, we spend it according to how long the next phrase is, how high and low, what dynamic uh, colors we have to have. So therefore, it is a balancing act between the position of inhalation, which is in, down, and out, and the exhalation muscle switches in and up. So we are balancing the two. It is often called la lotte vocale, the vocal contest. And it's between those two sets of muscles. Who wins? Mm, it's almost a tie. But the inhalation position is still open, and the air will come right back in, and you will be able to do it all over again. Pavarotti describes it as inhaling and filling up that balloon in the middle of your body. Sitting on it a little bit until you get to the end of the phrase and then fill it up again. Domingo has another wonderful way which is virtually the same. Feel the air being inhaled and how sturdy and strong it is when it's in that suspension phase. And then start there and go away from your body until the end of the phrase. So that is truly the simplest way to explain breath management. Resonating. We have two resonators basically. The mouth, which is the heart palate. The pharynx, which is behind your nose, between your eyes. And of course, the head cavities. If we can feel that the tone we produce is actually coming out of the head and the mask, we are on the right track. It's not in the throat, it is above the mouth line, really. And that is the essence of finding focus and knowing where, hearing your voice, if it reaches that, that spot of ring. Also being very aware of the three different resonating sensations. The middle voice, the head voice, and also the chest. Chest is not a resonator, it's simply a vibration. But the middle voice is more middle, middle uh, resonator, and the head, the higher we go, the higher in the head we feel it. We need to know that's coming, so that we can balance the breath, the vowel, the space, in anticipation of it. But the larynx knows how to do it. We just have to give it a little help in making sure we do what it needs to have done, but it is not complex. The next thing we need to talk about is diction. It is a well-known fact that diction, that the Italian characteristics of their language is part and parcel of a good vocal technique. For just for the Italian language, no. For all languages. Why is it so special? The vowel is the frame for the voice. The Italian vowels, there's only five or seven if we open and close the A and E, open and close the O and all. But they are pure. There's not a diphthong in sight. The vowel, the tongue rather, because your throat is open easily, delivers you the first vowel. And it will easily change to the next one without any pauses in between. No space. That same inside resonator will easily handle each vowel. It's very similar to what um, Nico Castell said. 
in the first vowel, in the first Italian vowel, are all the other vowels. So the simplicity of the jaw not being involved, no diphthongs, no overpronunciation, no tight tongue, so that those beautiful pure vowels are able to harmonize themselves. The second are the consonants. Sometimes we don't pay enough attention to their great role. Why are they so good for singing? They are the pilot for the vowel. Why? Because they are imploded, not exploded. There is no aspiration coming out of an Italian consonant. Therefore, it keeps that vowel and all the vowels in the resonator. So therefore, we are not inhaling, exhaling. We are inhaling, inhaling. Uh, uh, UC Buerling had a wonderful phrase that I love. I may have mentioned it in one of my previous videos, but it means a lot. He said, when I am singing well, I am singing one vowel and singing one note. That summarizes the smoothness of the breath management in that the throat is not changing the pitch, the breath management is changing the pitch, and the Italian diction, as we've just spoken of it is, feels like one vowel. Those are the basic essentials of what we need to keep in mind. Now, every singer is different. One image will not, it might work for singer A, it won't work for singer B. So your goal, our goal as singers, is with your teacher to take knowledge, this simple knowledge, it's really physical, physiological simple knowledge that is true, and find images that will allow those components to harmonize easily. It can be many different thoughts. Uh, Joan Sutherland once told me a great story where her husband, Mr. Bonning, her teacher, said, put your voice forward. She couldn't get it any more forward. She was singing around the house, and humming. And he said, that's the forward I want. And she said, I couldn't get it further back if I tried. So the images that we use have to be virtually tailor-made just for you. Your teacher, all teachers, through their knowledge, through their imagination, and their experience, will help you come up with a set of images that work with your inner ear and your inner eye to develop these essentials of singing. It does not change in classical singing. It will change for belting and it will change for rap, but not for classical singing or classical Broadway. So developing a set of vocalizes for each essential element of singing, as we just talked about, is a very good idea. You can have one that focuses on vowel harmonization, one focusing on the elements of the breath cycle, one focusing on head resonance, balancing the registers. But every vocalese, believe me, will be addressing all of these issues. I'll close it with a quote by Albert Einstein, who said, imagination is more important than knowledge, because knowledge is finite. Imagination is infinite. So the clever singer will take that honed knowledge, that clear, organized knowledge, and use his imagination in any way possible that will make it work. The next uh, video I'd like to address some of the phrases we use in the voice studio. There's so many of them singing on the breath, top down, bottom up. I used one today. Inhale, inhale. We'll take a look at a few of them and really look behind the meaning of the words. So until our next video, I invite you to, of course, as always, write to me if you have a question or a subject you'd like to discuss. And I wish you all a very happy spring.